Next, we have superintendent's update. Thank you, uh, President Johnson and trustees. We um, have a number of things to update on. We'll, um, it, I am conscious of the time, but want to make sure that our that our trustees and our public forum that we do a thorough update. Uh, I will say to those because uh, those who have joined us because the hour is running late that we will share this information in a written update. We will also uh, publish this part, just this part and a few other parts of the board meeting so that if folks want to watch it, they don't have to watch the entire board meeting. They can just um, just click on that part. So um, we've come a long way through uh, this COVID crisis and uh, particularly we're mindful of this every day. Um, and yet we are this week in the next uh, couple of days crossing 11 months in this crisis. You could certainly hear in the voices of our public commenters this evening. We hear in the voices we see in our hundreds of email messages that we receive, we hear the exhaustion and the struggle um, from all in the community, uh, those, uh, those who uh, have children in our community, those who work on our team, uh, it, it has been a long, long journey. Um, and we all recognize the significant need to have our students back in school, students and staff back in school learning together. Uh, and we look so forward to a day when we can welcome our students to in-school learning, uh, those whose uh, parents and family choose that option. And we look forward to doing that just as soon as we safely can. We're gonna talk more about what we mean by that over the coming moments. I wanna thank everyone for our staff, for all their hard work, our parents and community who've made thousands of sacrifices for their own families and to help other families. Uh, the stories of what folks uh, are doing to make this year work are uh, heartbreaking and uh, they are inspiring. And I just want folks to know that we absolutely hear that. Um, we, uh, as educators, alongside our parents and students and community, we understand better than most folks the many, many advantages of in-school learning. We know beyond the academics, it goes far beyond our critical mission of teaching and learning. It's also about social emotional health, mental health, developmental needs that our students experience. Um, it's the whole package of what school means, public school means in a community, that safety net, that social uh, infrastructure. Uh, we know how critically important that is. And trustees, as you're well aware, we shared on January 13th that we've set our direction toward a transition to offering an in-school hybrid learning opportunity for all parents and students who choose that option. We are working for our students and staff to again be in their natural setting in our Ann Arbor Public School buildings. And yet we do need to see that rate of COVID infection reduced in order to be able to cross the bridge to a healthy and safe return to in-school learning. Um, as we all know, the discussions continue in our community and across the country on the topic of returning to school. We hear and understand that students and families fall across a wide continuum of preferences and needs and family situations when it comes to COVID and school. Um, and I do want our community members to know, our parents and our staff, that uh, we do hear the wide continuum. And our goal from the beginning has been to provide as many options as we possibly can. While we may not agree on the timing of a return, uh, as each family is different, 
we all can certainly come together around the need and the importance of having our students and staff back together in school and for families to have that option available. I know the board is working um, alongside our team on this every day. Uh, we've set our course to offer an in-school hybrid learning opportunity this spring, and we will continue to offer the virtual learning for those families that prefer and or need that option to meet their student and their family needs. And yet, as we've said from the beginning, we hold a responsibility to maintain the health and the safety of our students and staff parents and community, that is our responsibility. That is our highest priority. We monitor the situation and we are watching to be able to make the transition to the in-school hybrid option. We hope that time comes soon. Uh, that time is not here now. And I understand that that will not make folks, that will not make many folks um, happy and yet these are the facts behind that decision and we'll go through them. I appreciate, and I know the board appreciates the input of physicians, pediatricians, and many experts across our community. Um, in addition to the health and science components that they reference, and we don't diminish those at all, the needs of students to be in school, we also have an obligation operationally to ensure that we can offer a consistent in-school educational experience and that when we return, we can safely and successfully staff our classrooms with certifi certificated and highly qualified teachers with leaders and support staff every day, that the buses will run with qualified bus drivers, that the food is properly prepared and served and distributed, that the CDC protocol cleaning can be completed every day that we're in school. In short, our responsibility extends beyond uh, the priority of health and safety and learning. It extends to that operational set of considerations, will we be able to offer that experience? And we know from the experience of other large districts that when levels of community spread are high, the staffing of a large system quickly deteriorates. It deteriorates more as a function of folks in quarantine and those kinds of challenges um, as a result, it is critical to see infection rates come down out of the current high level so that we can open schools, uh, offer that option for our parents and sustain a successful school opening. So when uh, we do see the data, uh, it will include uh, preschool, Wi-Fi and kinder students who choose the hybrid in-school learning model. It will include students with high-level specialized learning needs, those in our self-contained classrooms at all levels, elementary, middle, and high school. And it will also include small groups of middle and high school students who are most in need of in-school learning support. Following that stage one, we hope, uh, a week following, it may, um, it, it, depending on how our data goes, it may happen uh, at that rhythm of one week apart. That is our, that is our plan. Uh, at stage two would be first and second grade. At stage three would be third through fifth grade. Uh, as we have shared, the transition to in-school learning timelines will depend on uh, the progress of the COVID vaccination process for school personnel. Uh, as we've stated, uh, the opening does not hinge on every person having both vaccines, but it does hinge 
on that progress of vaccination. So we want to talk more about that because we know that protecting our staff and our personnel and our teachers will mean that cases will be reduced in the buildings. And that's critically important. It will have to do with ongoing levels of community uh, COVID and school district infections and community spread and any other emergent issues that would impact a healthy and safe return. So we're working hard. We're preparing every day for this opportunity for a return. And when the time comes, we will be ready. We have begun our parent and community information sessions this week. We know that it's critical that our parents have an opportunity to understand the options, hybrid in school, and of course, our, our parents are familiar with the virtual. So these community sessions are, are focused on the hybrid in school option, and they uh, provide a general information about the hybrid learning option. They share a sample daily schedule. Our uh, a few of our principals are joining us on those broadcasts and they will answer questions um, and they review the safety protocols and the responsibilities that students will have, uh, that our schools and districts will have when we return to a COVID informed environment. The next information session is tomorrow at 4 p.m. And yet we want all of our parents and staff and community to understand that uh, you may view those sessions at any time on demand following each of those broadcast times. So there was one on Tuesday last night at, uh, at um, it, yesterday evening, and then there'll be one tomorrow at 4 p.m. Uh, there is uh, the information. Now, we know that folks will have many, many questions at this point in the process. So Mr. Cluey is putting it up, trustees and community you can see. We want to hear and see your questions. Uh, we are all on my team reviewing those. Uh, several of our principals are helping us. Uh, trustees, the last time I looked, we were uh, around 650 questions. Uh, the good news is they're falling in distinct patterns of questions. So we'll be able to uh, support our parents and everyone in getting the responses that they're asking for. Um, we will use those questions to inform our next set of community engagement. I'll share more about that on Friday uh, in our weekly update. And then following uh, that's, that uh, component, we will be moving into community, uh, community, school community specific elementary community meetings. We will also be sharing uh, uh, some survey questions with parents to learn more about exactly what is needed. Uh, I'm receiving a lot of email trustees, you've seen it as well, with folks concerned that if we have too many students choose in-person or too many students choose remote, that we will change our plan for the year. And I just want to reassure folks, our plan from the beginning has been during this setting on the dial to offer the in-person for those who choose it, um, regardless of those numbers, and to offer uh, the virtual. So uh, it's... It, it, Folks should choose what best suits their needs and not uh, be concerned about uh, whether the outcome of that choice would change the board or the superintendent's uh, decision to move forward. So that's an update on where we are in preparing for our return to learn uh, process and offering that process this spring. Uh, we are going to go through more about uh, the rationale for where we are at this moment, because we want to update that information every week. Um, Mr. Cluley is going to put up 
um, a page from our website that is our additional considerations. And trustees, I know you're very familiar with this list. We started using it um, back in the late fall, uh, just as an understanding and a declaration to the community that the COVID situation has transformed and many of our public speakers uh, speaking to this uh, this evening. So I just wanted to remind folks that we keep that additional considerations guide there, um, that it is uh, about student needs, it's about the availability of COVID testing and timely results, our capacity for completing contact tracing, uh, which as we all know, our health department is not able to do at this time. So if we were to open, we would need to know that our Ann Arbor Public Schools team had the adequate time and capacity to complete the contact tracing and support of the health department so that cases are notified um, within the 24 hours and decisions are made to protect health and safety. Uh, we do look at the level and trend of community spread and obviously the strain on health care, uh, the progress of the vaccination process. Um, we didn't set out with that in mind, but because the vaccines are with us now and they are uh, coming available, this will really be a game changer for keeping the school community and school environment uh, at a much safer level and hopefully avoiding the in-out situation that has occurred in so many districts. Um, um, and then finally, our ability to ensure that all of us, staff and parents and students and community, that all of us can keep the mitigation practices. This is not a nice to have. This is an absolute uh, requirement. So uh, the community information sessions are very important because parents and all of us need to understand what are our responsibilities. So uh, this past week, our update on our safety process uh, in the schools, this past week, we had another training with more than 2,400 of our Ann Arbor Public Schools staff on our key mitigation uh, measures. And uh, we were able to review the Super 6 and trustees. You recall that the, um, the Super 6 are the six practices that will be our mantra in COVID-informed in-school learning environment. These are our individual prevention efforts, such as masking, environmental measures, such as improving our ventilation systems, our CDC prescribed cleaning protocol, um, public health protocols that everyone coming into the school environment commits to follow. And trustees, you know this also includes, and we'll have a little reminder on our parents' phone, um, but it also includes a commitment of parents to do the physical screening, uh, the screening conversation, six questions with their students every morning before coming to school. So these are important components of a COVID-informed, healthy and safe in-school learning options. option. We're working hard to be poised for the addition of the hybrid in-school learning option. We look forward to our community sessions that will continue to make sure that our parents are supported. Um, and it is important, um, however, for all of us to understand um, that part of what we wanna share this evening is that here in Washtenaw County, we are on uh, the top and the bottom of two key and critical lists. First of all, we are on the top of the list in the state of Michigan for the rate of community transmission. That's not a list any of us wants to be on the top of, but that's our status today. The good news, and Ms. Osinski is going to put up a slide, trustees, so you can see, if you just look at the roller coaster of the line, the trend line, you can see at a glance, uh, and those are the seven-day averages there along the line. 
you can see in Michigan, we have a nice uh, decline, 34 days of declining cases, and we're now at uh, 99 cases per million, squarely out of that level E, highest risk, and into level D, the second highest level of risk. You can see on the next side, slide, our region, a very similar, um, a very similar um, uh, trajectory there. Uh, our region is actually lower than the state at 95 cases per million, a nice downward, extended downward trend. The governor's been talking about how great it is that the, that the state uh, is moving in that direction. The third slide is where our concern comes in. Uh, as you can see, as Trustee Gaynor noted, uh, we have come down. Um, but uh, we are significantly higher uh, today uh, at 165 cases per million. Um, and actually, those last three bars, those are the partial data from recent days. Uh, you can see that we're at 165 cases per million. Uh, and that leaves us at level E, the highest risk. We have 11 days of declining case rates. Uh, we are pleased with that, but we remain, according to the Michigan My Safe Start, in level E at 166 cases per million. So with that, uh, Washtenaw County currently has the highest level of community spread in the lower peninsula of Michigan. Um, and uh, we are also concerned, as was mentioned uh, by several public commenters, and it's in all of the news, we are concerned about the outbreak of the B117 variant. Uh, we are glad that it appears to be contained uh, in the U of M uh, community, and yet, um, Dr. Khaldun has shared her concern that more contagious variant has been reported in 10 Michigan counties with more than half of those identified cases, 23 of the 45 cases right here at home in Ann Arbor. So uh, I appreciate uh, that Dr. Khaldun and our medical experts are watching that. Uh, we just want to stay on top of the situation. We're keeping an eye there on that. So you can see on this slide, the three areas, uh, Washtenaw County, region, and state. And uh, that is our concern at this time. Now, conversely, we're on the bottom of another list. Unfortunately, in several uh, news media uh, covering this today, so likely trustees and members of the community may have seen the story, is even though vaccination of all staff and students and school personnel is not a condition for return to face-to-face -to -face learning, we do know and respect the value of having our adults vaccinated in the school environment, it will make the in-school environment a safer and more consistent place to learn for everyone involved there. Uh, and we know that there is a high demand for the vaccine among all our staff, including teachers, paras, principals, and office professionals. Um, the MEA released information yesterday of over 22,500 members who responded to their survey. Washtenaw County was at the bottom of this list with only 25% of our teachers receiving an invitation to make an appointment for a vaccine. As the trustees are aware, and it has certainly been our experience, the vaccine supply for AAPS school personnel has been a trickle at best. Uh, Washtenaw County receives, has been receiving, we hope that this changes soon, uh, about 3,000 doses per week with about 25% or 750 of those doses allocated for all school personnel across the county with 4,000 active Ann Arbor Public Schools staff and 15,000 in the county. The math does not work 
currently in our favor. Uh, I know anecdotally, I hear uh, these stories every week that our teachers and principals and parapros and other staff members are finding appointment slots in Toledo, in Grand Rapids, in Macomb County, through their own healthcare providers. Uh, we're sad to say and sorry to share that the vaccine process has really become kind of a hunger game process for our educators. That is not how any of us wants it to be. It's not how Washtenaw County Health Department wants it to be. And yet uh, the vaccine supplies have been limited. Um, we know that recently vaccine supplies were reallocated by need and we are uh, supportive uh, that that means Wayne County and some counties will receive more. Um, and the reality for Washtenaw County is that uh, according to our health department partners, that allocation remains flat in Washtenaw County. So uh, we are actively working with members of the governor's team. I appreciate their outreach and their support of us. We know they are working to support, um, the governor and her team are working to support Ann Arbor Public Schools and Washtenaw County with rectifying this vaccine supply issue. Without their assistance, however, uh, Ann Arbor Public Schools will continue to be at the bottom of the state with school personnel vaccination progress, while unfortunately uh, currently leading the state in level of community transmission. In the Ann Arbor Public Schools, uh, we do still uh, absolutely hold uh, to our course for a return to an in-school hybrid learning option this spring. It is my job as superintendent to share the facts uh, each week as we go through this process. And that's what we've attempted to do this evening. These are the facts of our current progress. And yet we continue to advocate at the uh, local, state, and national level uh, for uh, more and faster vaccine process um, and to ensure that we are prioritizing the opening of schools. Uh, we have set our course when we are able to, we will begin with those students with the greatest specialized needs, our self-contained students and the youngest students. The sex successful return of our students will set the stage for a full return to our schools and moving beyond this COVID time. Though we've experienced a setback over this previous two weeks, we will continue to work hard, vigilantly monitor and aggressively advocate at every level to move this to a better situation so that we can achieve our shared goal of serving our students and staff in an in-school environment. As we have shared since last August, we will follow the steps when we see the data coming in line. Those steps are that I would bring a recommendation to the board uh, for a specific opening date and the grade levels and the stages included. Uh, the board uh, would deliberate in public over that resolution and then take a vote. Following that vote, I would send a communication to every parent, every member of our community, every staff member confirming the date for the opening of schools. Though today on February 10th, we are not out of this COVID global pandemic yet. We are confident that by working together, we will come through this challenging time as a community. We will shift our focus to spring, summer, and fall as we look to return, recover, restore, and renew as a school district and as a community. We've got a lot of work to do together to move our students, staff, and parents, and families, and our community beyond the pain and the loss of this COVID time. And we will know that our work has been well done when we're able to achieve the goal of a return in a safe and responsible and appropriate way so that all of our staff and students are kept uh, in a safe and healthy learning environment. 
It is our habit to show the weekly report of school infections and outbreaks. It is attached to board docs, but I know that not everyone wants to take the time to open board docs. So if you'll bear with me, uh, there it is. Uh, we try to share that every week. This is from two days ago, the February 8th, MDHHS. This is the Michigan school-related outbreaks, and you'll see 136 um, staff and students infected over this previous week, this previous week in 29 new school district uh, outbreaks, and then 489 staff and students infected in 81 ongoing outbreaks. The ongoing outbreaks mean that we have additional cases, but they trace back to one that came up more than a week ago. Uh, that total now is um, over 7,700 cases uh, in schools. And I will point out these are only the cases that are shown to have been transmitted at school or at a school-related event. It does not include the much larger number of cases uh, that occur among school-aged children and among our staff. So uh, I do share that every time. Uh, thank you, President Johnson and trustees. And then the next slide, you have it. I just want to make sure the community sees it, are the Washtenaw County outbreaks, um, both new ones and ongoing ones are there. So thank you for your tolerance of that. Just want to make sure we get it in the record, the full report. And so with that, trustees, I appreciate your tolerance of the hour. Um, that is wrapping up the superintendent's report. And we're uh, available to take your questions or comments uh, as you as you have them. Thank you.